I don't know how to tell if it's recording. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. Candice, go ahead and take it away. Okay. I really apologize. Um, I worked and it all worked just fine yesterday. So, um, all right. So, all right. Now, um, my microphone is talking back to me, so it's kind of, kind of crazy. Um, um, Candice, like I said earlier, it sounded like your uh, your speakers were on as well. So what I what I would recommend, take the headphones off your ears, and you'll only hear it coming out of your speakers. Okay. But leave the mic in front of your mouth. So I mean, if you just put it around your neck. That would probably okay. Work. Can you hear me, Dan? Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. So. Um, uh, well, I apologize to you all. This was working yesterday. I don't know what happened. So I'm going to have to kind of hurry through here. Uh, but I'll make the slides, the slides are available. I'll make them publicly available. So um, the purpose of the, the copyright um, is, um, comes from the U.S. Constitution. Uh, and as you see, it says the Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of science and useful the arts by securing for limited times to author and investors the exclusive right to their respective discoveries. Um, Seventy years and the plus the life of the author is a little bit more than limited, if you ask me. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave these uh, this copyright protection facts off. Um, and also the length of copyright protection, so we can get to something more. Um, one Candace, thing that can you turn up your microphone just a little bit? It sounds like it's moving further away from your mouth, so it's hard to pick up. The uh, I'm going to steal the slide here for a moment. Right above the talk button is where you can adjust your audio. Is that there better? Oh, that sounds much better for me. Okay, it's still reverberating here. So I'm going to go through the slides until I get to something um, uh, oops, more quickly. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. One thing that uh, I want you all to make sure you, that you understand, because a lot of people don't, is that registration is automatic um, and uh, it's a legal formality. However, um, there are reasons why that you might want people might want to, to uh, register because you can't get damages if you're infringed unless you do. Um, so um, copyright uh, is in our ALA Code of Ethics uh, with the most recent edition. Um, it uh, says we respect intellectual property rights and advocate the balance between the interests of information users and right holders. Um, copyright law very definitely affects the way libraries handle. One of the most important things is, is first sale doctrine 109. Um, this is what allows us to circulate our books without having copyright uh, affected. We are one of the very few countries in the world that does not require libraries to pay a fee every time uh, an item is kept out of the library. So that's very important. It also means that we can, uh, uh, but there are some requirements in terms. In other words, it has to be a nonprofit library. It cannot be a profit library. A section 109 does not apply. Um, or a nonprofit educational institution, um, otherwise not. And this also allows you to circulate computer programs. All right. Um, this is the one, 1092A is lending a computer program, again, for nonprofit uh, profit purposes by a nonprofit library. Um, now, uh, copyright um, protects the original works of, author, of, of authorship, um, and I am not going to read this again. Um, it extends only to original words for uh, uh, works of, of uh, authorship. Um, consequently, it does. Uh, it covers literary, musical, pictorial, graphic expressions, uh, but not names, titles, and other short phrases. Okay, there are, this is, are the types of uses for, for copyright. A constitutional use is the use of materials that are not protected about copyright. 
Um, and this includes ideas, procedures, methods, systems, processes, Candace? concepts, principles. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, interrupt again. Um, a quick question for you. Your microphone, yeah. is it placed right in front of your lips, or can you move it down so it's just below your lips? It's, it's now uh, Yeah, but now it's a little hard to hear you again. Well, how about now? Probably because I turned it down. Mm, um, how, how is your microphone turned up? Is it all the way? Yeah, yeah, actually it is. I'm not looking again now. Okay, that's that's better. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, <clears throat> and um, it works that contain entirely facts or information that is common property and has no original auth uh, authorship, like standard calendars, height and weight charts, etc., are not available for copyright. Although sometimes people put copyright notices on them to pretend it is. Works that federal government employees produce within the scope of their employment are not covered. Um, titles, names, short phrases, and slogans, symbols, or designs um, are also not. Okay, personal use is the use of a copyrighted work for the purpose for which it is intended, like reading a book. And finally, most important for us, fair use is the use permitted by the copyright status for a use that might otherwise be infringing. Um, now, um, Section 108 is, uh, has four things that you use to analyze if a use is fair. And I have them here, the purpose and character of the use, including commercial or nonprofit, nature of the work, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the whole, and the effect of the use on the potential market. Now, again and again and again, when I teach copyright, um, there's a frustration expressed about um, why do you have to go through this analysis? Um, why don't we have a more specific statute? Um, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, the uh, and as this says, the distinction between fair use and what is an infringement will not always be clear. There's no specific numbers of lines or notes that may satisfy or be taken without permission. Um, and it's, um, it, it's important that that be because it gives us the best possibility to use fair use. If we had a very rigid definition, we could use things much less often. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, Facts about use, it, you know it's a statutory exemption. Uh, it can apply to any of the exclusive rights. Uh, it modifies the marking monology, uh, monopoly of the copyright holder uh, so that co the copyright can fulfill its constitutional purpose of promoting learning. Um, and it applies to all copyrighted works regardless of the media in which they are fixed. <clears throat> um, as I said before, it's a case-by-case -case basis in order to protect the rights. Um, no real, unfortunately, that means no. There's real, no real definition of the concept. It's a a, a doctrine uh, which is called an equitable rule of reason, which basically means you use reason to determine. Um, Another fact, of course, is that material in the public domain may, may be used without limitation, even if it's included in a copyrighted work. Um, okay, I'm going to skip over this one, uh, and here you go. Okay, you can inf you can infringe a copyright, not a work, and fair use applies only to the use of the copyright, not the work itself. Um, therefore, determining a fair use requires making distinctions between a use and a use of copyright. Uh, and here are some examples. If you call, copy the work to market it, you're using the copyright. Um, and because the copywriter has the right to mark in the work without permission, such a use is infringing. <clears throat> if you copy lawfully obtained work for study or research, you're using the work. Uh, that means you'll be able to use it. Um, I do say um, may be a fair use because you still have to do a full fair use analysis. And in the documents that um, I will um, post, that's what I was trying to do this morning when everything failed, um, I will give you um, 
a, a sample of how you can, uh, that will help you go through doing a copyright fair use analysis. Um, you may always use the work without permission. You may use a copyright only within the provisions of fair use or with permission. Um, so as to uh, kind of summarize, the use of the work by definition is a protected use. The use of copyright must, uh, must be with permission or, be, or fair use. Uh, infringing use is use that violates one of the rights granted to copyright holders. All right, now there are some special exemptions in the law uh, by, of reproduction by libraries. Um, libraries are permitted to make reproductions of copyrighted works for preservation and replacement purposes. Again, it's, if they must, the, the library must be open to the public and make reproductions for patrons on a nonprofit basis and include notices of copyright with reproduction. Um, and if no copyright notice can be found on the work, um, you must include a statement that it is. All right, 108 applies other exemptions, including the preservation and security of unpublished works, the replacement of unobtainable published works, reproduction of copyright works at the request of users. However, each of these exemptions include a number of limitations, and I've provided a link uh, for you to go to um, to, uh, to get the full one and a link to the Copyright Office Circular that, that uh, continues this. Okay, um, now this is an important one. Unsupervised cop and one to protect yourself. An unsupervising copying by library users. You can do this uh, as long as all re re reproducing equipment or, uh, dis uh, displays a notice of making the copyright may be subject to copyright law. Um, and if that's the case, Section 108 does not impose liability on the li library, the archive, or its employees for unsupervised use. However, um, it would the user infringes. They still could be made uh, liable. And I also, by the way, suggest that you place before all of your computers a disclaimer indicating that the, that the library does not sanction any illegal use of the computer uh, and include copyright in that, in that list and indicated that the, that the responsibility is with the user. Now, uh, there's another exception for, tra for the transformation and reproductive copyright use works for users with disabilities. Now, um, this is, unfortunately, there are some limitations on this, too. And um, one of the li limitations is that the purpose of the library that's doing the reproduction, uh, the, the majority of their, of their customers are those with disabilities. So most public libraries would not um, comply with that, although public libraries can provide materials to an entity that does meet that and therefore help with that whole process, which of course is a very important thing for us to do. Okay, now, non this is a really important part of this presentation because there's a lot of misunderstanding about fair use guidelines for educational use. And I'm a person that doesn't get angry very easily but I get extremely angry at the number of sources that pretend or act as if these fair use guidelines were the law. Uh, and this is just not true. They do not have legal standing in the law. In some cases, cases they were included as notes uh, in the reports as examples of how fair use may be used when the copyright law of 1976 was adopted. Um, there is no statutory requirement for quantitative guidelines, for example, the amount of the work that is copied. Now, they can be useful. And by the way, if you do a, uh, an examination of one of these guidelines and find that your use meets this minimum, then you're, you can be pretty sure you have a safe harbor for doing it. But if you find that you don't meet that, a full fair use evaluation should be done. Okay, now, uh, in reaction to this problem with the guidelines, guidelines and the predilection of a lot, particularly school librarians or school administrators to demand that they are used, um, the Center for Social Media at the American University School of Communication 
worked with the Washington College of Law and has created a number of tools um, that can be used to better understand using fair use rights. And in each of these cases, they collaborated with the, the actual users uh, and user groups. And the most latest one is the Code of Best Practices for Academic and Research Libraries. This was in 2012. And that particular code is both on the site of the Center for Social Media and on um, AC, uh, the Association of Research Libraries site. Here are a number of other practice codes um, and, they, and, and a link to where they can be accessed. So that you were interested in them, you could pick them out here, other ones of these. All right, now, controversial issues. Um, currently, orphan works is one of the constitutional interests. Now, orphan works are, um, are works that um, you can not identify who the author is or you can't locate the author. Therefore, it's impossible for you to ask for permission, and they're in limbo. Um, one of the reasons that this became a controversial issue is because of a couple of law cases recently, uh, re and particularly the Google Books. Um, so in, to find out more, in, in the, co the Copyright Office currently is opened up doing an, in, doing an inquiry about orphan works. Um, in order to advise it about uh, what, st what uh, steps they might take. And Carrie Russell, who is um, on the Washington office staff of the American Library Association, um, wrote in District Dispatch, uh, which I actually, you can, if you're interested in copyright, you can subscribe to getting notifications of things being added about copyright here. And there are links to the court cases um, that brought the interest of of or, of, of orchid work, orchid, excuse me orphan works into the whole scene once again. Okay, licensing. Um, I have here, and, and I won't uh, spend a lot of time because I'd like to have time for you to have questions. Um, uh, but it, it offers the author a chance to transfer his ownerships, um, and. Um, that can result in fair use not applying. Um, it, they, the uh, a, uh, author has several different choices, and um, when a license is used, um, uh, it is not possible in most cases to uh, to have a fair use. And uh, usually, you don't own them; you're just leasing them. Okay, um, and this is uh, another. Uh, warning here that you should look to see what your library is doing about this. And that is um, a, a lot of users are making of, are just choosing licensing agreements with their vendors. Um, in some cases, they negotiate their own license agreements, which can be more friendly. But very often, they don't. Um, very often, um, the administrators responsible have no knowledge of the terms to which they've agreed to and they're not providing library users with this important information, which may make it um, uh, expose them to um, the danger of violating that license. Um, so it is important uh, to remember that uh, though, though copyright does not usually apply to license material, you can, in your licensing agreement, state that fair, fair use is included. Okay, um, I don't know whether there's any school librarians here, but um, Doug Johnson from Minnesota State University uh, wrote an article that takes the same stance that I'm taking right here. And that is, we shouldn't um, fixate on what we can't do. We should shift it to looking at what we can do, take a more positive attitude in relationship to um, the maximizing of fair use. Now, there's another thing that, that does provide some additional access to users, and that is the use of Creative Commons licenses. Um, a lot of people think that this means it's a substitute for copyright, um, but that's not right. Copyright, it still happens automatically, um, and uh, it provides the, but it provides the author and user of copyright more options. They can choose and control what kind of uses gets. Um, 
and um, I've given a quote here, uh, a, a link here that you can use to be able to determine um, exactly what those, what those agreements mean. Um, it was interesting, I edited the last two editions of the Intellectual Freedom Manual, and the first one I did, I was shocked that ALA was claiming copyright of the whole thing, including the interpretations of the Library Bill of Rights and the history of that. The second time, um, I won a, 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 a partial victory in terms of um, much, some of the book actually being um, available. Um, with attribution. In other words, somebody used something they had to attribute it to coming from the manual. Okay, here's a link to Doug Johnson's article. Uh, there are lots of other very good things in that as what, besides what I have mentioned. Um, so, um, that's the last slide. And um, I uh, see that we have a little bit of time so that you can ask some questions. Let's see. Okay, I just didn't see this thing. I'm sorry, I didn't look. Okay. All right. Um, I await questions. If you would like to use your microphone to ask questions, I ask that you please raise your hand. Uh, just one second here. You can push this button here to raise your hand. I'll just put you into queue and we can call on you. You may also type into the chat box below and press enter to send your message. Um, this, the 15% of the week, that's one of the guidelines. And so you would choose the guideline, see if in fact you are copying less than 15%, 15% and presume uh, if the other criteria that are a part of that guidelines are met, that you can do it. But there are instances in which um, using the um, uh, entire work might not, might be a fair use. They're limited um, because, uh, again, you would have to go through the whole analysis and I will uh, be adding that analysis uh, to this site so you can log back in again and, and use it. I will be doing that um, no later than tomorrow, hopefully today. I was struggling from all these um, difficulties I had in, in connecting at, during the time this morning that I intended to do that final fact. Um, I could ask you to do this. Would you raise your hand if you're from a school library? Okay, doesn't look like we have any of this. Um, I, uh, uh, let's see, I can see here some of, the, some of them are indicated. So there's at least some public libraries. Um, I would urge you um, to share some of this information. You, I would freely share my slides and the links with your school librarian because they are the most endangered. Um, schools are uh, administrations are horribly adverse to any kind of risks and um, any information that you could give um, uh, to them to help them make an argument would be useful and helpful for the student body. Okay, let's see. If a website that offers free puzzles and coloring pages states on the page um, that all items may be downloaded yet has a copyright notice that written permission is needed, what do you do? I would send a request to the website to ask them that you, there seems to be a, um, uh, a dichotomy here that doesn't make sense uh, and ask them to please give you more information. Candace, if I can add something to that, um, I work with copyright mm -hmm. quite a bit myself in multiple uh, different areas. Mm -hmm. um, copyright really gives the person who holds the copyright uh, the control on how they want to distribute. And if they are distributing it free on their website, that is considered something you can then take. That's been my understanding of it in the past. Uh, yes, but I would go ahead and make that point to them anyway. 
uh, because they that most people don't do that, and and bringing that issue up with them, I think would be. I, I agree with you. It certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, and at you, the same time, you do want to make sure that you're not distributing it to others without their permission, because there you can get in trouble. Exactly. That's that's the point I was going to make. You could make a personal use of it. Remember, personal use is a protected use, um, and it it. So it gets a little bit more murky in the digital world, but if they have said that, it probably is. But I still think it's a good point to make the note. Have done so three times, no reply. Well, I'd go ahead and use it as personal use, uh, not to, not to make it available or to distribute it to others. You can, of course, provide a link to that spot. Um, that has been a kind of controversial thing with which there has been cases, but it's been generally found by the courts that a link is not, but just simply a link is not a violation. Okay, any other questions? Is there um, anything else? that you wished that I would have included in this because I might possibly be able to comply with that and, and, and include that on information that would be available to you, any topics. Because, of course, um, this is an extremely complex situation. I taught semester courses to Emporia State University students, and a semester wasn't even enough to give it adequate coverage. Okay, well, in the information that I post, I will include my email address, and if anyone has some additional questions, I will be very uh, happy to try to uh, respond to them. I did not give a disclaimer in the beginning, which is what I should have, is that I am not an attorney. I'm a librarian. I do have an undergraduate degree in political science with an emphasis on constitutional law, and so I pursued it. Uh, very diligently, and I am associated with both of the copyright com committees, um, both the uh, Office of Information Technology Policy and the uh, Committee on Legislation um, at ALA, uh, which gives me access to most, since most of the, the members, uh, particularly on the OITP committee, are attorneys. Thank you very much, Candice. I'm sorry for all no the technical questions. difficulties we had to get uh, to get started here. For uh, not only for Candice, you, you have to put up with them, but for our attendees uh, sitting and waiting, it took quite a while. But thank you very much. Thank okay, you. and when I um, okay, one more thing: when I distribute uh, the, the documents and stuff, you are very free, uh, free to. Um, to share those with others, and I'll indicate that. Fantastic. Uh, if, you. if you have like Word documents or something you're looking to share, um, you can use the load content button to pass those out now, and folks will be prompted to download them. Yeah, I I'm gonna I've uh, oh actually I can on the slides you mean? Okay. Well, I mean through the I'm, blackboard. I mean, can post them on the, the digital site, the digital U site as well. If I have them, I can I can post them up there. That'd be fine. Oh, uh, okay. Um, you know, and when I beginning, I actually did put them because uh, how do I load? How do I uh, load the whole thing so that people could get oh, them the right now, itself? like I did before? <laughs> that that was already loaded. Yeah. Up, so that was already in the file queue and should be fine. Um, okay. Okay. And okay. Everyone will be able to see that in the archive. I thought you. Uh, when you were talking about you had some additional materials, I thought. I, I, do, I do have, but the, I was going to uh, just go through them and make sure they're all accurate um, when I got up uh, very early this morning. And I spent my time troubleshooting instead. So I will do it. And I, will, and I can go back and, and load it. Uh, well, no. Go screen. ahead and email them to me. I'll post them up on the website. I'm going to turn off the recording right now. That way, okay. somebody doesn't have to wait okay. for the entire session just to get the files. They can just download them off the site. Okay, that's